Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Cryptane Weekly. Welcome, welcome. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, first on the docket is uh, I got a little video here that explains how torns work. Uh, <laughs> there's a decent chance that a few of you uh, might be into torns, use torns in some way or another. Uh, maybe you've heard of Popcorn Time. A pretty popular service that uh, streamlines the torrenting process. Uh, anyways, this video goes into that, the whole thing about how torrents work, uh, how how it's all distributed to bits, and how when you're downloading it, uh, it's over a large swath of people, so you're collecting from all over the world, essentially, or from many different users, so there's less of a fail state if one person goes down, well, someone else probably has the same bit somewhere, and so on and so forth, plus you can get more better download speeds because you're downloading from a whole bunch of smaller sources as opposed to one big server. Plus uh, the legality of it all, uh, if you're torrenting, oh, and it happens to be uh, from one uh, one big server, well then they can just go crack that server and take it down, right? But if it's a whole bunch of small people, it's a lot harder. Still it happens, uh, but it's a lot harder. Uh, they go into a little bit more detail about it uh, in the video, but if you've ever been interested in how that all works and, and uh, if you've ever been worried about it legally or whatever the case may be, that'd be a cool little video to check out. Um, uh, next up uh, is the Void Virtual Reality. Now this is pretty cool. This is an extensive article from Polygon on this. And uh, essentially it's a... Uh, uh, VR taking a mobile form. Uh, so basically what they have is they have a place, a warehouse or whatever the case. Uh, and they built this whole structure and, and, the, and it looks pretty plain when you're just walking around it. But you throw on this backpack and you throw on this VR headset uh, that's powered and now you're in the same space but now all the walls and everything have a virtual have the virtual interface on it and whatnot and it, and it looks surreal. You know, now, now as opposed to virtual reality, it's like a it's like a VR but AR at the same time because it's using your actual surroundings uh, and then essentially uh, recreating VR in the real world. So you know you still won't walk into walls or anything because all the walls in the VR are there and they have bit mapping and stuff, so a wall can look medieval or whatever and and have and have texture to it. And you can go put your hand out and touch it. Uh, it might not feel exactly the same, uh, but it's really cool, and they can have a lot of depth, and they can do a lot of tricks that way. Uh, it's a really, really cool thing. Uh, it seems like it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, way that they're going to go about doing this. Um, you know, it just shows where virtual reality could go down the road. Uh, more like AR, I guess, uh, for us, for us folks. Uh, when that finally comes out, like Google Glass type thing, but not really, more like HoloLens, I guess, where it interacts with the real world but then protects its own thing. But they're, they were saying that it's almost imperceptible to tell the difference uh, between the virtual reality and, and what you're actually feeling in the real world. So it, it gives you a really sense, a really huge sense of, of presence, um, which is really, really cool. So I definitely checked that out. Uh, the next big thing uh, for any of you who love uh, who love Minecraft, why wouldn't you? Uh, and also have a Wii U. Uh, Minecraft is coming to the Wii U. Uh, Microsoft and Nintendo have come up with a deal to get uh, Microsoft owns Mojang, who owns Minecraft. Uh, they've come up with a deal to bring uh, Minecraft to the Wii U. And then there's a Mario mashup theme too, so you get like a whole bunch of the Mario characters in the whole world and a whole bunch of blocks themed in the Mario way, and sound effects and whatnot, of course. So if you really love Mario, <clears throat> excuse me, if you really love Mario, and uh, and Minecraft, then, uh, and you happen to have a Wii U, I wouldn't say go out and buy one for this, uh, but uh, yeah, you're in luck. It's finally coming to the Wii U, so that'll be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, definitely check it out. There's a little trailer video I got, two minutes long or whatever, that you can check out. Uh, the next thing is, uh, Jupiter. <laughs> Why Jupiter? Well, there's a video producer, 
uh, called Life Noggin. He's got his own channel. And uh, he does a video about you, but he does videos on a whole bunch of stuff that are uh, that are pretty interesting. Um, but in this particular video, it's about Jupiter and, and what would life be like if we didn't have Jupiter. Uh, apparently pretty horrible. Because, <laughs> uh, as the video will explain, uh, from the formation of our, our planet to, uh, to, the, to the protection from asteroids, uh, it is theorized that Jupiter not only helped Earth be formed, but also protects us from incoming asteroids due to its huge mass being several, several, several times bigger than Earth. Um, so it's a pretty interesting video. Uh, if you didn't already love Jupiter, here's possibly a reason why, not to mention the huge storm that's on there, perpetually. <laughs> um, anyway, so check that out, it's pretty cool. Uh, another, another VR uh, article um, from Kotaku is about a guy uh, trying who lives uh, rather separated from his girlfriend uh, and they go on a date in uh, in VR uh, using a program called Altspace. Why? Because it's pretty much the best and it's free so why not? <laughs> uh, so he, he details the ongoings about how that all how that all presents itself. Uh, he's like a he, his avatar is a generic white guy while his girlfriend plays a little robot. But you can talk to each other, you can interact, you get to see uh, the way the head there's head tracking and then the the HTC Vive uh, controller tracking, so that way you get that uh, you get that experience and, and and even though it's just the movement of the body parts, uh, it goes a long way uh, in expressing emotion. Uh, you know you you wouldn't think it, but just our little the little movements that we the little tells that we have really really make a big difference. Uh, so. Uh, he goes on to that and how, the, you know, the troubles of like, you know, let's say you're on a date with your girlfriend or boyfriend and, uh, and then you, you come across some friends or whatever and, and he had a little situation about how that goes down and whatnot. It was, it was, it was pretty cool, I admit. Uh, it's a pretty long article, but give it a look, see if you're interested. Uh, it's also just cool for interacting with friends and whatnot. You can also watch videos together and stuff. So there... So it's kind of, you know, it, it, it adds more to the possibility of having that, that shared experience when you don't have the opportunity to be close to family or friends, depending on where you live, or maybe you've had to travel for some reason or another. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now, another uh, bit in the technological news is uh, second skin. Now, this is... Uh, this is like an anti-wrinkle type cream, sort of. <laughs> um, but essentially, there's a little video in an article on it. And in the article, they go on to show that so you, it's, it's got a two-step process. You put this cream on first, and then you put like a catalyst on top of it, which will uh, harden and strengthen the cream. Uh, and then what that does is it gets rid of the wrinkles uh, by flat, by a... Uh, by strengthening all the skin around, around your uh, your face or wherever your wrinkles are, uh, and it's and it's and it's virtually it looks like it's imperceptible to the human eye, and it really takes away like decades worth. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see in the video. Uh, it's really, really good application. It seems like it's got nice wear, uh, and uh, you know it's, it's something to follow if you're interested in the whole thing. Uh, if you've ever wondered like why I choose the birch the birch trees exactly, uh, other than the fact that they won't ever grow into a huge tree and stuff, another reason is is that uh, Minecraft is a thing where it checks ticks for uh, trees. So it's like I don't know how long it is, but it, it's like every so often it'll check to see if a tree can grow. Now uh, with most trees, it has to wait like five minutes, let's say. And then it will start checking to see if a tree can grow, and then check and check and check, and then all of a sudden your trees can grow. But with the birch trees, uh, they actually can just immediately start being checked. So they are more likely to grow immediately, uh, which is nice, but then like I said, you always have the headroom here to get underneath, and they only ever grow so tall. So it's just easy cleanup, easy management. Um, ultimately, just if you want ease of use, birch trees are pretty much, pretty much the way to go, uh, I'd recommend. Uh, Anyways, though, 
Uh, back to back to what we were going on about. Um, so, uh, if you haven't been following up with games, uh, and you may be not because uh, you know you probably you might not have a PS4 or whatever, but it's still worth noting is Uncharted 4. The game looks fan. Fantastic, and you know, if you remember the articles back, or the the videos, the commercials back in the day, where they did like, oh man, this is like a movie, um, and you're like, okay, cool, <laughs> right? Yeah, of course. But anyways, it's not, uh, this finally actually does that for the most part. So, um, yeah, this actually is like a movie they say that uh, or you can see in the video they, there's the, I got this article from uh, also from uh, Kotaku that goes into a pretty in-depth look about uh, how, the technology behind it oh, well. and uh, oh my god I can't think at all I'm just going off the deep end anyways the technology behind the facial recognition and whatnot and you can really see the details and you could really tell when someone's lying, uh, and you really get a sense like these are actual actors when they are uh, finally in a game, which is nice. Um, so uh, I would check that out for that. But then there's also uh, how they they maintain their 30 frames per second, uh, 60 frames in multiplayer, uh, and uh, it's really really cool. <clears throat> to see how they've done all the technological prowess behind the whole game. Um, there's just the bit mapping and the shadows, and they go into details about all the stuff, the water, and how they do transitions. They say, like, when you're playing this game, there's literally no load time other than the initial. So you pop into this game, and you never see a load time again. You could literally, I mean, I, I think it's around a 14 to 16 hour game, something like that, 12 to, 12 to 16, let's say, depending. Um... And you could literally go from start to finish and not have a single loading screen. That's pretty insane uh, to think that they've done that. And and with good reason. I mean, you, you know, when you're watching a movie, you don't want to have these transitional sequences where it's like, oh no, we got to do a commercial break because we're loading in the next scene. Could you imagine? <laughs> That'd be horrible. Um, so they, ha they have techniques for that. And there's like this photo photo mode that you can go into at any time and the way that they figured out how they did it is that there are times when uh, when the the video the gameplay even though it's all in game there are times when it's actually videos so it does a video for a, for a minute and then that way they can load up the next scene and then they can transition uh, but it's seamless you can never tell you can never tell what's when that actually happens um, it's really really cool so I would give that a look-see if you're interested in, in the tech. Uh, I know I am. <laughs> but that's probably just me. Um, so, uh, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, another thing is uh, I was watching a video uh, from someone who I've just I've just found out about was uh, Wendover Productions. And uh, they got a YouTube video explaining the cost of flying. Uh, if you've ever been curious why flying costs so much, uh, well, he'll explain why, that's for sure. Uh, he goes into great detail about, uh, and they're all approximations, don't get me wrong. He doesn't actually know. It's not like someone's ran over and told him or necessarily. <clears throat> but, uh, so he goes over the details of why airplane tickets cost so much. And he was like, even going from like New York to San Francisco, if you're living in the Americas. Um, something like that, like like a couple decades ago, would it was illegal to have it cost less than like $1,300. Uh, which is pretty insane. Um, if you could imagine, right? Whereas now you can get a round ticket for like $200. Um, so it's pretty cool to see all that. Let's get that. Do that. Um, so yeah, he goes into detail about why they uh, cost as much as they do. And then, uh, yeah, if you if you've ever been curious why tickets cost so much and how they've been going down over the years and expected expected to continue to go down, then I would definitely check that out. Uh, another thing, the last thing in tech is the Hyperloop. Uh, if you've heard about that, is it's about a transportation on a 
a lot of different technologies are going into this, but essentially it would be like uh, a maglev train, which is a train on magnets. I gotta turn down this music. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Uh, okay. That's better. Um, it's like a, think of a maglev train, which is a train that uses magnets, um, to levitate so that way there's no friction between the train and the track. Uh, and then it also uses the track to propel itself uh, through uh, alternating magnets. And then, uh, the, the hyperloop is supposed to be, uh, it will be inevitably in an enclosed system. Uh, in a tube essentially where they can uh, suck out as much air as you can so that way when you're traveling that there's a lot less air resistance um, and that way you can even maintain more speed and then they, they have other things they get the air from the in front of the the, the the train to the back whatever and you can get like 300 several several hundred miles per hour pretty insane speeds uh, so you can get from one place to another could you imagine going from New York to San Francisco or whatever in just just an hour or two, uh, or getting from America to China in just a couple hours. Uh, that'd be pretty crazy if they can ever get that going. And this is the first steps in that direction to uh, to bring in our entire the, the globe together, so to speak. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's a little underwhelming. Uh, you know, if you blink, you could miss it uh, in the video. But check it out. It's, it's pretty cool tech. Uh, it's definitely something that I'm looking forward to. And maybe you are too. Um, okay, so that's all that. So now let's get into the media. Uh, one of the movies I've seen recently, Captain America, Civil War. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe you heard of it. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of the friggin' heroes in it from Marvel. Uh, it introduces a couple new ones. Uh, I think they do a great job of introducing them. I don't want to go into it just in case somehow you've managed to avoid it so far. Uh, but um, and you still want to see it, of course. Uh, but it's it's really well done. Uh, it stays on track with its story. It stays fun, um, and it introduces these characters that now now you're I'm excited to see their their individual movies as they come out. Uh, so, you know, uh, oh man, damn, do I have an axe? I don't pick. Um, but yeah, so go check that out. I mean, come on, just go check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, I was watching an anime too, uh, Prince of Stride Alternative. Uh, I don't know why it's called Alternative. Um, cause I don't think there's any other, uh, anime series. I think that's the only one, but whatever. Uh, it's basically like, kind of like a relay race in Japan and how it's like this huge, big sport. Uh, which is, it isn't realistically, and, and, it, and the, and the things they do sometimes is a little too dangerous that they would ever allow in a real sport, I, I'd imagine. Um, but it's really fun to watch, it's really, uh, you know, it's all about the perseverance, and, and you just feel good watching it, I mean, as you do, good, it's got good acting and whatnot, uh, pretty solid anime, if you're into sports, or racing in this case, uh, it might be fun to watch. Um... I mean, alternatively, if you really want the best, I guess, sports kind of uh, show, I would say Pong uh, would be a much better anime to watch. Uh, I think the style is wholly unique. And uh, it's just something... I've never seen anime like that exactly. Um, so, time to go to bed. Uh, so Pong would be my first. But, if you, you know, this is a new one that just came out if you want to watch that. Uh, something else you may have noticed, uh, Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty uh, Infinite Warfare have both come out with their trailers uh, showcasing their new games. And, uh, you know, from the looks of things, Call of Duty is getting booed like crazy. Uh, and Battlefield 1 getting high praise. Uh, personally, if I had to choose one, I'd usually go for Battlefield. Mind you, I understand the... the oh, I gotta really, I should just put a piece of dirt down. I don't know, wood block will do. Um, I understand the fun in both games. Uh, I've always just been a fan of Battlefield because they come out less often and, and therefore they can make bigger improvements on the games. Uh, not to mention Battlefield is always gen generally like a, a bigger, a bigger experience, uh, vehicles, uh, destructible terrain, just bigger, grander. They try a little bit more 
to go outside the box. I feel like Call of Duty doesn't really like to, to sway from anything. <laughs> so, what do I hear? Should be a sheep or something. Um, so, yeah, it's just cool to see all the likes and dislikes that are uh, that are happening there. Um, and the last thing is, if you haven't gotten your Windows 10 upgrade, uh, I would upgrade now. Uh, you got until about July 29th uh, to do that, um, and then uh, after that, you're pretty much you're pretty much boned unless you want to pay. Uh, now, mind you, if you don't want to upgrade, but you want to be able to upgrade, I guess you could upgrade now uh, on your computer, and then uh, and then downgrade. Uh, that way you have access to it uh, down the road after that date. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I would do that. Or you could get, like, maybe, like, get another hard drive, transfer, or, like, make a make a direct copy of what's in your original hard drive on the new hard drive, make a copy, uh, boot that up, upgrade that one oh, to Windows 10, and then swap that back out for your old hard drive. Uh, that's Windows 8 or whatever. So that way, it shows that your computer has upgraded once, uh, and then that, and but you just then you're back to exactly what you had before, and it wouldn't. Other than Microsoft knows that you have the upgrade now, you would never know the difference. So uh, check that out. Anyways, <laughs> I better uh, get into showcasing what I got here. You've probably been like, "What the? He's got freaking this and that going on here." So uh, as you can see, I got the road design. Uh, it's about five wide, really three, I guess, but then there's a little flourish on the end here. Uh, I like to think of this as like a, a, some kind of like a, I was going to say ravine, but like the drainage pipe, I guess, or drainage system. Uh, not that we need one. I know Minecraft doesn't work like that. I just thought it was cool to have this, like, so things go onto here and wash this to the side. Um, so that was a, that was something I just kind of like, I liked the idea of. Um, and yeah, I have a, this is just a basic layout. This pl I plan to have this, these roads go all over the place uh, in a very uh, systematic way. <laughs> Don't you worry. My OCD is an overdrive for that. This is all very 100% it's got to be in a specific spot. Uh, that might that little center thing might change down the road, but we'll see. Uh, I got a little bit of the wall design. Um, so here's the stairs. Uh, did a little thing with uh, stairs, half slabs and whatnot. It's hard to tell what I got going on here, but I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was important to make sure that the sides, you can never see the, the blocks here, except for here, I guess, but whatever. Um, and then I got the walls. Uh, I've decided to, I got stairs in the bottom here. And then it goes up, and then I got half slabs on the top, uh, which should be about the right height, so when you walk up, you can just see over. But you can't walk over. Well, you can jump over if you want, but, you know, whatever. Clearly do so much. Uh, so I got this, uh, this, this whole area is from these four spots is going to be about this height. Um, elevated over top of the rest of this, uh, this, this little area. Uh, so the castle, I inevitably plan to build is going to go that way where all that little stone area still is. Um, this is still not the castle. This is like, I don't know, like a front courtyard type thing. Uh, you know. <laughs> um, and then, oh. And then I've been digging out a little bit down here because I was getting a little tired of having all my stuff out in the open. I kind of want to get rid of this and move it. Uh, so, oh, that'll work on that. So I've been uh, trying to get some kind of system. So this is 25 by 25. Uh, just perfect to have a three wide door on all sides if I want or not want, depending. I can also just put stuff in here if I want. Um, and then that way I can have chests lining all the walls, uh, I believe, here, you know what, I'll just, uh, quickly grab a couple, I haven't really filled any of these, uh, and I believe it goes, yeah, you can go right up to this, to the ceiling, uh, cause it's half slabs in the ceiling and that gives just enough space to open it up, um, so yeah, so I can open it right up to the ceiling, which is pretty nice, uh, you know, so you're not wasting. Uh, I figured, why why have full slabs in the top? There's no reason. You might as well just have more open space, honestly. Uh, and then whenever, whenever uh, uh, there's a pillar or something, I just use a full block uh, to fill it out. So you can never really tell the difference, and it gives it a little bit more 
a little bit more room. Uh, I could even consider putting half slides in the bottom, but I thought it might look a little weird. Uh, I might, I'll might i figure that out down the road. And then I got my four pillar system. These torches are just here as a temporary thing. Maybe I'll put glowstone in here or whatever down the road. Um, okay, well, this is running a little long. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll get back to work on this. Uh, get back to you next week with a little bit more cryptane news. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you later.